Uh, tell me a little bit about the idea behind your art, where you got to where you are, kind of just a brief kind of catch up of who you are and why you create the artwork you do. Okay, so um, yeah, first of all, thanks for having me. Honored to be the first. Um, I'm an artist, uh, work in digital drawing and printmaking is how I describe what I do. Um, I've always been an artist. Uh, my first love was drawing, uh, same for many artists. And then um, I had a good crack at painting and, uh, and then digital design. And it was due to some very specific industry experience that I had uh, where I acquired knowledge that was very special and, and unique, um, a unique type of printing and, and, and how to design for that type of printing because um, you can print something, but you, you obviously need to make sure that it can print correctly. So uh, that's what I learned how to do. And I use those same techniques in my work. And um, so I guess to summarize, fine art background, specific industry experience, and that specific industry experience unlocked my creativity in a way. And the experience that I had was in the security printing industry. And security printing is the printing of anything that you don't want to copy easily, like money or checks or bonds and things like that. And there are lots of conventions in that sort of, you know, design and, and printing and um, there's a very specific design language and, uh, and I use those techniques and that language in in my work and sometimes what I produce looks like money and sometimes it is money <laughs> um, uh, my work is moving more and more away from the banknote format and more into um, more into something that that takes the the visual language of money and um but it, so it still has that that authentic feel and that's something that i try and achieve in all all my work and um you know that authenticity and so it itself cannot be easily copied copied which is like that's like the holy grail in art right yeah so you said that you went to art school um and then later on you went into kind of doing the securities would you say you learned more about what you need to do for your artistic craft now um, in the kind of security and banknote industry than you did in art school? Or would you say that kind of the reads were important or which, which one would you say was more kind of impactful? Um, art school, I didn't learn a damn thing. I'm joking. <laughs> uh, I, I, I learned, I, I decided to focus on, on, um, on video in art school. And, um, and I, I really came to art school with like a, uh, that was my intention from the first day actually was to, was to explore video. And that, that played a role later in, in creating videos, which I love doing. Um, but what really got me excited about printmaking is working in that industry. And, and it really like connected the dots to a lot of different things. And in art school, printmaking was the only thing that I didn't do. Um, I actually, I think I was the only one who hopped around from every department. There was, painting, there was sculpture, there was new media. And I think I had I spent at least a day in each one of them. Uh, but printmaking, I, I just couldn't be bothered with. It was too, too much of a faff. And then working in that, in that environment in, in a money factory, for want of a better word, that just, um, that just set this, this passion on fire for, for, for that type of printing. And, um, yeah, that's it. Oh, that's fascinating. Um, so when you create artwork now, you usually create it. What's the process that you use? What printers do you use to do it? Is it quite a manual process or do you use kind of uh, printers and things like that when you're creating physical work? Physical work, yeah. So um, the work behind me can talk specifically about that because there's no digital printing on this sheet of paper at all. And all the printing here is not commercially available. So in the last... 12 months, I've kind of perfected this technique um, of creating something that looks very, very similar, um, almost the same level of, uh, of printing of a banknote. The, the techniques behind me is intaglio printing, which is, it uses a press, a printing press, and it involves a lot of pressure. So it's quite, 
it is it is a manual process and it requires a lot of like heavy heavy lifting and and uh, to print a lot of money a lot of money takes a lot of work um but yeah the other process here is, is letterpress which is a similar process similar um technique doesn't require the same amount of pressure but it's the same principles um the design of something before it makes it to the press is very exact and very delicate and and uh, everything i mean it's beyond pixels it's, it's all done with vectors so it it can translate all those tiny tiny details onto the the plate okay let's get so, yeah. into kind of the um Actually, that's, that brings us to the next question quite well, is you've got Kanye West in the background there. Um, what do the faces in your art represent to you, and why do they represent that? What's the kind of meaning behind creating the artwork with these people in it? Well, um, I guess first off, I, I really like the challenge of, of making a portrait with this engraving style, with lots of um, lines and, and dots, there's a formula to it. There's a, you know, to that engraving technique and each face is different. And I, I kind of like the challenge, but beyond that, um, I like to, I tend to make things in series. So I like to establish a story between people um, and create a, a thread, you know, some kind of narrative between uh, various faces. When you have a series of banknotes that are released, in the same way, they tell a story of, um, of a country, of a culture. And so I like the idea of creating a, a culture within a, an artwork or a window into a culture. And um, talking of, of money design, it always represents something, the portraiture on money always represents something um, official and trusted and branded. And I like the idea of giving legitimacy to things that sort of on the fringe or not in the mainstream a preeminent and some way prescient and in the case of mr west behind me that's kind of uh that's an example of, of prescience because he's just recently announced his candidacy candidacy for the u.s election so it's somewhat somewhat within the realm of uh, future prediction mm. So, for yeah. those of you who don't know, Tom, you've produced three main series, and then series, series, and then a few kind of offshoots um, within that, and that's been the kind of uh, Avatars of the Great Awakening, which is kind of your premier sort of concept. Um, what is what is the concept behind that? In the first series, you had um, uh, Ross Ulbricht, uh, Edward Snowden, Julian Assange. Um, who am I missing? Uh, oh, a a anonymous. The anonymous had the anonymous face um and, and jack dorsey and so what's yeah. the relevance of those people and how do they kind of connect uh, to each other um i think there it was in that in that series of works it was um it was like really specifically about uh the disintegrating narratives in the mainstream and these are all people who have either um, knowingly or accidentally or, um, you know, surreptitiously revealed um, information that contradicts the narratives in, in the mainstream of our, our cultures. And um, that was really, you know, where the idea came from to, to group those people together. Um, specifically, you know, specifically about the leaking of information and how that, that comes out. And Jack Dorsey was a bit of a, a weird choice. He's kind of he's the only one who hasn't paid a personal price yet for, uh, for I mean, he, he, he owns uh, a platform where a lot of these, this information has surfaced. So in a way, he's been instrumental, whether or not he, he is um, part of the same, you know, on the same side as, of these people, he still played a part in in revealing uh, the information, um, so I decided to to honour him for for better or worse. <laughs> okay, great. 